depending on where you live in the country, you may have noticed a new type of highway interchange popping up all over the place. Mostly replacing the traditional diamond interchange in more congested areas, this newly popular interchange is called the Divergent Diamond Interchange. I've been seeing them pop up all over North Carolina and Georgia, and on this video, I want to talk about what that design is, why it's so popular, and also what are some of the downsides to it. Welcome to the channel. I'm Mallage Mike, formerly an engineer designing the world. Now I travel it, giving you a first person view of various cities and infrastructure, as well as commentary videos like this one on all things transportation and infrastructure related. Hit that like button since I got you to click the video and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content and would like to see more. Now back to those diverging diamonds. First, what is an interchange? When it comes to roads and transportation, an interchange is basically an advanced form of intersection. It's where two roads cross, but the main flow of traffic is grade separated and turning traffic utilizes access ramps to reach their desired direction. Most commonly, these can be found on the US interstate highway system as all intersections are required to be interchanges. Interchanges can also be found along non-interstate freeways and sometimes inside cities where they are used to prevent signalized crossings between major arterial roads. The most commonly used type of interchange is the diamond interchange. The diamond interchange separates the freeway from the minor road with the grade crossing either over or under the freeway. Ramps parallel the freeway and connect to the crossing where drivers can turn left or right or continue straight back onto the freeway. Diamond interchanges are commonly used in rural areas or interchanges with low traffic volumes. To deal with higher traffic volumes, they are sometimes modified to include traffic lights, additional turning lanes, or roundabouts. Diamond interchanges work well when the traffic volumes are low, but when the crossing road is wider, more busy, and more lanes are required to handle it, things can get messy. Right turning traffic is usually not a problem. If you notice, at most busy diamond interchanges, you'll see more lanes for left turning traffic when coming off the ramp than right turning traffic. Sometimes only the left turning traffic is signalized while right turning traffic can merge freely with the crossing road in such a case that we can see here. So with the diamond interchange, the problem comes into play with conflict points and signal phases. Conflict points are the parts of an interchange where traffic crosses, merges, or diverges. Conflict points are where traffic accidents are most likely to occur within an interchange. A conventional diamond interchange has up to 18 conflict points. In order for all traffic to get through the interchange, a minimum of eight phases are required. The divergent diamond interchange is a design which aims to solve these issues. First off, the divergent diamond significantly reduces the number of conflict points. The Florida DOT has an excellent illustration here where we can see the number of crossings reduce from 10 to 2. Theoretically, this will increase safety by limiting the chances for flows of traffic to cross one another. The crossroad requires less lanes, in turn, reducing the amount of space required for the interchange. Signal phases are reduced to only two short phases, which also reduces delay significantly. The existing underpass or overpass gains increased capacity by removing the need for turn lanes. And finally, the one that matters perhaps the most, the cost. Divergent diamonds cost significantly less than normal interchanges. Now with all that goodness and praise for this design, you're probably wondering what is the downside for these intersections? They can't be perfect or else every transportation agency will build them, right? Well, yes, despite how great the divergent diamond is, there are some downsides. The biggest drawback to the divergent diamond is the drivers. In America, we drive on the right side of the road. This is ingrained into the culture and is so second nature that most drivers do it without even thinking about it. Their divergent diamond temporarily puts traffic on the opposite side of the road. This can lead to confusion to drivers unfamiliar with the design and cause some odd and awkward attempted maneuvers from some drivers. Another downside is when it comes to pedestrians. At least four crosswalks are required for a pedestrian to clear the interchange compared to only two crosswalks to clear a conventional diamond. The next disadvantage has to do with crossing the road. Traffic on the crossing road cannot be free flowing as both signals cannot be green at the same time. This means that no matter when you get into the interchange, you will stop at some point before being able to fully clear the interchange. And finally, the last downside is that traffic exiting the freeway cannot re-enter the freeway in the same direction without fully leaving the interchange and making a U-turn elsewhere. While this isn't a big deal, it can be a minor inconvenience for drivers who take the wrong exit or those hoping to use the exit ramp to bypass an accident on the bridge. So 
where did this remarkable design come from? The first known divergent diamond interchanges appeared in the 1970s in France in the cities of Versailles, Le Perou, Saint Marne, and Seclin. Pardon my French. However, it was not until around 2005 that the United States begin considering this design. The Ohio DOT was the first to plan using it for the interchange of US 224 and Ohio 15 near Findlay, but ultimately the plan fell through and Ohio decided to add lanes to the existing overpass instead. It was Missouri who ended up being the first US state to actually build one. In June 2009, this interchange between I-44 and Missouri 13 was converted from a conventional diamond interchange into a divergent diamond interchange. The following year, the Federal Highway Administration released a report called the Alternative Intersections Interchanges Informational Report, highlighting the benefits of the divergent diamond interchange. And ever since then, it has been on. Multiple DOTs across the country have adopted the design and over 120 have already been built with many more planned. Georgia has built this one at I-85 and Georgia 140, AKA Jimmy Carter Boulevard, north of Atlanta. I've spotted one in Sarasota, Florida here at I-75 and University Parkway. Caltrans built its first one in 2020 at the interchange of California 120 and Union Road in Manteca, California. And in 2019, the Virginia DOT converted the interchange of Courthouse Road and I-95 near Stafford into a divergent diamond. The United States is on a building frenzy of these things. And as of November 2020, there are 135 divergent diamonds in the world and 123 of them are in the United States with another 29 under construction. It has certainly become the new wave. All right, guys, that's the whole rundown on this newly popular divergent diamond interchange. Have you seen any divergent diamonds popping up in your area? Did you drive through one yet? If so, how did you like it? Did it seem to improve traffic flow? Did you spot any confused drivers? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you on the next trip coming soon to a town near you.